I'm Scott Allen Miller, and these are my adventures of everyday life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today, Mr. No Good asked the question, when you first came down to Nicaragua, you were looking at expecting to buy a hotel and move into Pochamil, which is a bit farther south in the country along the coast. But I actually ended up in Las Penitas and here in Leon, which is a little bit farther west and a little bit to the north. He was wondering what made us pick this area over the Pochamil area, and we're gonna get to that right after the bump. So before we delve in too much into answering today's question, I'll give a little bit of background. I first lived in Nicaragua a little bit over nine years ago in 2015, and at that time I lived in the city of Granada, which is the tourist center and colonial city farther to the east, a little southeast of the capital, and sits on the north side of Lago Nicaragua. It was a beautiful experience, and we fell in love with Nicaragua, but we didn't like living in Granada for us. It just didn't fit our needs well for a family, and we spent a bit of time living abroad in Europe before we returned to Nicaragua a number of years ago. When we came to come back, we were expecting to move to the coast. We knew that we wanted to be near the ocean. Primarily, my wife really li loves living on the ocean. And that was something she was really looking for when we lived inland a bit. That was, you know, we had the lake and we thought maybe that would give the same feeling. And, and for me, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a lake guy, uh, but she definitely missed the ocean or had always wanted the ocean. And it was something that we hadn't really had. So this was an opportunity to live near the ocean. So we looked at a lot of beach places. When I was back in 2019, I spent a bit of time in San Juan del Sur and that really prompted a lot of our beach investigation here uh, in Nicaragua. So I have a special place in my heart for San Juan del Sur, even though it does drive me crazy at a lot of times uh, because it did do a lot to show us some alternative options in Nicaragua and really prompted us to think really uh, carefully about if Nicaragua is where we wanted to make our permanent home. And so that really triggered that decision. We did not come back because of COVID, uh, immediately to do more investigation, we made the judgment call based on our previous having lived here. Obviously, that gave us a lot of experience. We knew a lot about it. But with 2019, it gave me that additional, like, where is the country now? Where are things going? And what other options could we have? Uh, and it was, it was a great, really great experience. And so we decided very quickly, and COVID really slowed us down, uh, that we were going to move back to Nicaragua. But one of the things we wanted to do was have a house before we came down. This is incredibly foolish, was a massive mistake. And one of the reasons why I, I very, I think important that I advise people against this so much, because one, I totally understand what drives you to do this because we were under the same pressure. Now we had COVID and it wasn't me. I didn't want to buy before we came down, but right, we had those things going on. I understand the pressures and the reasons why people feel that way. And two, I've made that mistake myself. I'm not saying, oh, I'm smarter than you. I wouldn't do this. No, I totally made that mistake. I got totally burned as everyone who does has happened to them. And now I'm coming from a place of experience and having lived here so much, I can tell you these pitfalls and why you're feeling that way and why you have to stop and reconsider and why the things you're being told. We were tricked just like everyone else. And I'm not going to go into those things. I have plenty of videos about that stuff. I just want to give some background as to why we were here, why we were looking at Pochamil. So when we were looking from abroad, we did a lot, a lot of searching in San Juan del Sur, and we really thought that that's where we wanted to be, mostly because of my 2019 trip. Uh, we knew it was bigger. We had been there previously, but not spent a bunch of time, and it had been, it had been, it had grown quite a bit from the time that we had originally been there. Uh, and so uh, my impressions were that that area really made a lot of sense for us. We were thinking we wanted to be a little bit closer to more expats, something that I also talk a lot about how when you move, you'll start to change. And, and originally it was like, we we're really worried about being not in Nicaraguan culture, of course, we wanted to be around it, but we were worried about being too much and being like just overwhelmed and not being able to speak English. And just, you know, there's things we worried about, even though we'd lived a lot of places, uh, moving full time still had some of these fears, some of these concerns. Uh, and so San Juan del Sur felt like it was going to answer some of those things for us, which again, I like to tell people that may not be the case for you. I mean, it may do those things, but you may not be happy with that long term or whatever. So we were going through this process as well a number of years ago. So I've, I've done it firsthand. We looked heavily for a really long time. We looked at properties in the village. We looked at properties on the water. We looked at properties just a little ways out. We did so much searching and I have a team here in Nicaragua who was on the ground. So we were not stuck just talking with real estate agents or looking online. We actually had people who knew house construction, who knew the country really well, who were you know native Nicaraguans, who were driving around looking at every property for us, coming up with ideas, talking to people in person, doing price negotiations and all that. So we had a huge advantage over most people. Most people when they're 
are looking at moving to Nicaragua and trying to make these decisions are going to be doing it from abroad, have, have no experience here. But we had lived here. We just hadn't lived here in, the, in a couple years at that point. I had visited again since we had lived here, which most people have probably visited, but I had built on top of having lived. So we were building up experience over a period of time. So we knew how it had changed. We had an office here that had been open for many years. So even though we weren't here all that time, we had staff that was here. We were in communications with Nicaragua. We were working with Nicaragua. We were doing things here in country, even when we weren't physically here. And my company had constantly been working on finding good information about different parts of the country. We had opened offices in Managua, opened offices in Matagalpa. We had a physical office building. So even even though I wasn't living here, I did have a house here. I never used it, but I had one and it was furnished. I had internet, went through all that process, a rental, but we'd done all that stuff. And those are things that I had and we had had multiple offices in multiple cities and done so many things. We were constantly interacting with Nicaragua, which gave us a lot of experience. And we had lawyers on the ground and, and uh, uh, construction workers on the ground and all kinds of things. So we had a lot of resources. And so that gave us a huge leg up compared to most people who are coming in and don't know people and don't have any history of experience and no direct experience and those things all put you on a back heel. So we really did have a bit of, a, uh, of an advantage over most. Over time, we eventually just stumbled on a property that looked really promising in Pochamil. And uh, the price came in at where it was reasonable for us. Remember, we were stuck because of COVID and we were trying to move quickly because my wife wasn't willing to sell our house in the United States until we had a place to live in Nicaragua that we owned. That was a requirement of hers, which I cannot advise you against enough, but that was a requirement. And so from our perspective, we really needed to get ourselves and the company moved down as quickly as possible. And so deciding to do a purchase remotely just made sense because of COVID. Otherwise, we would have been on a plane and shopping in person instantly. So now that COVID, even we would not have made that mistake had COVID not been what was holding us back. And so, because this is at the very height of COVID, like you could not travel, we couldn't go anywhere uh, at that time, which really prompted us to say how much we wanted to get out of the home in Texas the whole time. We're like, this is so awful. Had we been in Nicaragua when COVID hit, this would have been so much less expensive, so much safer, so much simpler, so much better. Our lives, we lost a year of getting to live abroad because we were trying to be practical for reasons that ended up not being practical. Now that was happenstance and not something you can predict, but it really got us thinking acutely about how important it was to move on with our lives and not wait to do the things that were going to make us happy. So really, we were like, we got to get to Nicaragua quickly at that point. So we found this place. Our, our goal was not to run it as a hotel at the time. We found a place that was a small hotel, boutique hotel, had about nine rooms. It actually could be upgraded to 10. And uh, we, we did a lot of research. We sent people out. Our team went in with cameras. They went and inspected the place. We, we had them map everything. And we decided that it was a good deal. And we moved forward with that. Um, and that once the paperwork was done and we were locked in, we sold our house in Texas. And that gave us the freedom to then move. When I then came down with my business partner, with Paul. We came down and did everything with the lawyers. Was, we're working on the final stuff. At this point, we could travel, but not easily. We had to fly into Honduras and take have drivers bring us down here. We couldn't fly directly into Nicaragua. That's how crazy it was at the time. So this really was hard still by the time we had made this move. And we came down, we're signing all the paperwork. And at that point, I'm not going to go into the details. We've talked about this before on the show. I'll, I'll definitely cover it in, in detail at some point. But we got scammed by the real estate agents. We got scammed by the, uh, the actual person selling the property. But we were fine. In fact, it worked out very strongly in our favor. Uh, but we did go view the place. We did determine that Poche Mill was farther than we wanted to be. It was a lot of factors. Uh, but we that specific property fell through because they were attempting to scam us. But we, we had crossed our T's, dotted our I's, had the right lawyers. Everything was done correctly. And when things went wrong, we were in a position to walk away, uh, which many people are not. So we were able to protect ourselves and then realized how much we were just being foolish in the whole thing, but it had solved our problem. Our house in the United States had been sold. We were now free to take our time and very much purchase what would make sense for us. We still wanted to get something relatively, relatively quickly, still foolish, but not nearly as foolish. We had a much better view of what things should cost. We were in a much better bargaining position and we were able to view things in a much broader way. So we then took our time, instead of looking at properties, immediately set about looking at communities. And, you know, we were working with what we knew previously, but now we're in a position to go everywhere that we could possibly determine would be a town we'd be interested in. And so we drove all over the country Country and visited town after town after town and determined that there were some we were really interested in 
We really liked uh, uh, Boqueta, for example. That was a real consideration. We looked at some properties, but ultimately when we got to Las Penitas here in the Leon zone, it just struck a chord that this is the place we were supposed to be. Ponaloya didn't have that same feel for us. Had we only visited Ponaloya, we would not be here. Not that we don't like Ponaloya, but it's just not the vibe we're looking for. Las Penitas was perfect. It had the right restaurants, the right ocean, the right rocks, the right hotels and size of community and activity going on. And we were we're barely there any time and Paul and I are both like this this is the spot this is where we should be then it was a matter of finding the right place so it's a number of things it's both the beach was fantastic and had exactly what we wanted as a beach it was that we could go to restaurants and find food that we wanted to eat and we knew that living there wouldn't be so limited that we would not want to go out some of the places like Pocha Meal are smaller and the amount of like food variety can be more of a challenge and trust me it's a challenge in Las Vanitas so going to a place that's even smaller it's a bigger challenge and if you cook at home all the time that stuff is different, but then distance to a grocery store may be a factor. There's a lot of different things you have to consider, especially when looking at Nicaraguan coastal beaches, because they can be pretty remote. And that's the biggest key with Las Penitas. Las Penitas and Ponaloya are the only two beaches in the entire country that are part of a major city metro area. In this case, Leon, where I am now. The city of Leon is the second biggest city in the country, and it's a wonderful city. We like it a lot. We love the culture here. It's very hot. People will always point out it is one of the hottest cities. It is it is a colonial city, so it has all the infrastructure problems of an ancient city. We're 500 years old this year, uh, same as Granada. And so it, it isn't perfect, but it's got a lot of great things going for it and having two beaches that are part of its metro area is really significant. If you're looking at Pocha Mil, that is part of the Managua zone, and the travel time from there to Managua is lengthy. Of course, you can do it. It's not a big deal. If you wanted to get up in the morning and go to the beach, it's not that bad. Nicaragua is a small country, but it is a real drive. It's an effort to go to the beach. From Leon to the beach here, I have walked it, not just from Leon to the beach, but from Leon all the way to the end of the beach. I walked the entire length of the beaches. Riding a bicycle is no big deal. Going by car is something you can do over and over all throughout the day. It's not pack up the kids and make our one trip to the beach and make it count and come back late at night. It's at any moment we can be like, oh, let's order food and then decide to get in the car and drive to the beach and we still have time to get a beer and wait for the food to be ready even though we ordered it before we left the house. It's a completely different experience. From this side in the Barrio Sutiava side of the city going into the beach, you can be in the beach in 12 minutes. That's really easy and those are not high speed roads. That's driving at 40, 50 kilometers an hour. With a little bit of traffic, you're dodging horses, dodging bicycles, people walking in the road, slow cars, slow, slow motorcycles. For some reason, slower than the people walking. Why are they so slow and dodging all that is still 12 minutes to get out there plus any of the little tiny businesses in between there's a new casillo place right outside leon on the way to the beach by the way i've not tried it yet looks really good we really want to get there they're super popular already but could be just because it's the only thing and they're new so Las Penitas had this incredible advantage of being, at the time, the only beach that also had access to a grocery store. Now, I've heard just in the last few weeks, someone uh, filled me in, that uh, La Colonia has opened in San Juan del Sur. So that's a big deal for them because they've been operating off nothing but a poly, which is okay, but really limiting. People had to go into Rivas or anything. Now they've got a little bit more down there. But outside of San Juan del Sur, we're the only beach that has any kind of reasonable reach to a grocery store in all of Nicaraguan coastal areas. So for us, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit more than 12 minutes. It's like 15 to 20 minutes. We've got La Colonia. We have La Union. We have a number of markets. It's not just one, but Mercadito is only 12 minutes. Uh, we have um, a, multiple polis, a couple maxi polis. We have the, the Paseo Real shopping mall. We have the major market downtown. We have all the little stores downtown. All of that's within easy reach of the beach. Plus the beach has some markets of its own. Very limited, super limited, but they do exist. Most of the beaches have that. That's all they have. And so being able to go to more restaurants, having a very lively beach with things going on, live music, most of the time, not every night, but a lot of the time, every week for sure, and having um, a variety of everything, having some amount of tourists, both regular expats and backpackers passing through, but not in large numbers. Lots of Nicaraguans go to the beach, which Pocha Mil has tons, but doesn't have the backpacker crowd, for example. This is a little bit more of a mix. But being part of the metro area, really significant. And for us, that proved to be a, an absolutely perfect guess. Because now that we lived here, after putting in a full year of living directly on the sand, because we own directly on the sand in Las Pinitas, we decided that actually living on the beach wasn't where we wanted to be. We kept our place on the beach, but we also got a house in the city. At first, we thought we'd spend most of our time on the beach and a little in the city. Within a month or two, we flipped and we spend almost all of our time in the city and go out to the beach is when we want to go there. But we normally sleep in the city. 
and that just works out better for us. That doesn't mean it will work out better for you. Loads of people want to sleep on the beach all the time. I'm a YouTuber and I'm invested in businesses here. That makes me really high profile. So being on the beach can be a specific challenge for me. Uh, so, so that's one of the reasons that drives it away. Um, but also we found that it's just loud and there's activity and it's just, it's a very different vibe. And long term, we're probably going to end up on the beach, but in a slightly different location on the same beach, just a little bit off the sand. Being on the sand makes you really high visibility. Plus, you're dealing with salt spray and stuff that you don't think about that like I like to have cameras it would destroy all my cameras it destroys your car it destroys everything the amount of repairs you have to do and so if you have a lifestyle where like I'm still working during the day I'm editing videos I'm working with customers I'm on the phone all those things become really problematic when you live right on the beach because the salt air destroys everything you own and so if you're just living a very laid back laying in a hammock drinking a beer watching some TV lifestyle it doesn't really affect you and it's the perfect place to be. But if you're like me and you have tons of electronics and you need to be able to work and function all the time, it can cause a really noticeable increase in cost of living and stress because you're constantly having things to just get destroyed and dirty and it's tough, right, for the, for the things that I do. So being in the city for a lot of that works out a lot better for me. So that's what we found, but we found that that beach to be perfect. And now three years in, we still say we couldn't have found a better beach here in Nicaragua. This is the place that we want to be. We do love the proximity to the city. We do love going out in the city, live music, restaurants, uh, museums, shows, hanging out with friends. There's a great culture here. We really like uh, the whole vibe of the city that we've discovered here, but we also love our beach community and we like being able to go back and forth and take part of both and to do so at a moment's notice and to easily be able to do it where maybe we want to do different things at different times. It's very common that I will go to the beach and my wife will go out in the city or vice versa and we'll go in the opposite directions. Um, sometimes we go together but sometimes we don't and it's really easy to do that because it's so close. This is the only place where you can casually take a taxi from downtown and just run out to the beach and think not much of it. Of course you're going to pay a lot more than you do for a taxi just around town but it's not so much that it's like a major thing. It's generally about 400 cords so you're looking in the 11 to $12 range, right? That's a lot for a taxi here in Nicaragua, but considering how far they have to go and they have to turn around and drive all the way back without somebody, it's not that bad. And at certain times a day, you can get cheaper. You can always take the public bus for a few cents. I think it's about 20 cents to go out to the beach. Like it's really cheap. Uh, so as you're here for time, you learn how to do things. You can find people that are going back and forth, catch a ride. There's a lot of ways to do it and keep that cost down. And uh, so, so that's unique to Las Panitas. It really has uh, proven time and time again that it gives us things we wouldn't have had otherwise. The living full time on or near a beach in uh, in Las Bonitas is unique, just like San Juan del Sur is unique. Many of the beaches throughout Nicaragua have a similar vibe of being very remote beaches, very tiny communities, very isolated. And then when you go to a city for things, it's I gotta make a shopping trip way out to my city. I gotta you know do everything I'm gonna do. I have to organize it. And going out to dinner is an event. Like all these things. When I, growing up, I grew up on a farm, and it was. 45 to 60 minutes to get into Rochester, New York, to go out to dinner at any like real restaurant. Yeah, we had a few local things that were great. Like it's not bad. But when we went into the city, it was like this major thing, 45 to 60 minutes. You had to make sure you had all the stuff with you. You had to make sure you thought about where you're going for the evening. You had to have someone to watch the dogs. You had to do all these little things because you're going for so long. And here we don't have that. Going to the beach is just, whoo, we're just running out to the beach. It's like running r around the corner, right? I couldn't get, when I lived in Dallas, Texas, I couldn't get to Taco Bell and back uh, any Taco Bell there and back any faster than I can go to the beach here. It, it's that kind of existence. Whereas if we we're in most of the beaches in the country going into, especially Pocha Mil, you want to run into uh, Managua, you want to run into Didiamba to do something you're looking at. Uh, it's it's an effort. And, and you're not just going to take a taxi. You're not just going to bicycle. You couldn't walk home if you had to. Not that you would hear, but you could, like I have, right? Um, it's it really is a unique experience within the country. Of course, San Juan del Sur is even more stuff near the beach, but still far from a city. So it has um, in some ways more resources and in other ways less. So it's just a different mix. So you may find that the things that I'm saying about Las Bonitas that sound good may also sound good there in a slightly different way, but they'll also meet most of those needs. They have like a, a Pronto right in town. They have an AMPM right in town. We don't have those things yet in Las Bonitas. And that is probably quite some ways away. We don't even have an ATM. So we're still pretty isolated, but our ability to go into Leon is so easy. It's only 15 minutes to an ATM. So yeah, that's farther than just walking around the corner. There's definitely things about San Juan del Sur that I love, but for us, the mix of things in Las Bonitas really did end up being absolutely perfect. We are thrilled with our decision. We are not changing that anytime soon. It doesn't mean it's the right one for you, but 
it does have factors that people may not think through until you're living here and really spend some time and understand how all the different places play out from a logistic standpoint in their environments or from a cultural perspective because each beach is culturally different. Even Ponaloy and Las Benitas being right next to each other with the exact same access to Leon are two very uniquely different places. Thank you for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That comes directly to me and helps pay for the cameras and the computers and the time and the software and all the things I need to be able to put this show together for you. And uh, of course, it helps pay for any travel and neat events that we do. I know we've done a lot of not traveling recently and working towards flipping that around pretty significantly, I hope, in the near upcoming future. If you would be so kind as to share on social media, tell a friend about the show, watch another episode after this one. I will pop up some links at the end to make it easy for you, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And here you go, if it's working, some links are on the on the uh, the trail here. Just, just click on one of those, and it tells the algorithm that this show is going to lead you to more shows, and that's what they want to see.